Hello everyone, my name is Kiana and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm starting off with a fresh face again because we are getting into a new series here on this channel where I'm going to give you guys some tips um, and just kind of like teach you how to get into makeup for those of you who don't wear makeup yet or want to get better at it or want to start trying new things. So we're going to break this up by parts of your makeup, I guess I should say. And today's video is going to be about face. Um, so we're going to talk about primer, foundation, concealer today, um, how to apply them, best ways to find your matches, what to use, and all that kind of stuff. It's going to be very informational, and these videos might be long, um, but hopefully it's really helpful to you guys. I really like teaching, and I really want people to like... I don't know, get into makeup and see if they love it as much as I do because it's honestly been one of the most like life-changing things I've done is getting into makeup. I do want to preempt this video with a disclaimer that these are tips that I am providing to you for you to try but ultimately, you know, kind of discover what works best for you and your skin type and your style of makeup. So although these tips I've found work for me or are best for people to get into makeup. It's definitely up to you to kind of like try it out yourself, see if it works, um, see if you like it, and just kind of discover your own style of makeup from there. So hopefully this at least gives you like the stepping stone into starting and trying because that's all I really want for you guys. I hope you really enjoy this series. If you have any tips that you'd like to give people, definitely comment below and leave them down there because... <laughs> You know, let's all just help each other out. The world needs a little bit more of that. All right, you guys, let's start off this video talking about skin because, you know, that's what we're getting into today. The most important part in starting all of this, you know, getting into foundation, getting into concealer, getting into primers, you need to know your skin. Um, you want to prep it well, but you also want to make sure that you understand your skin type um, just because that way you'll be buying products that will work best with your skin type and it'll help you in the future. You won't have to struggle so much like applying products and wondering why they don't look as great as they could. A little like history on my skin, I used to have really really oily, like very 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 oily skin. I'd say um, now my skin is a little bit more on the normal side. I noticed that the more I wore matte foundations because I thought my skin was oily, um, it just got even more oily and I think my skin was just trying to compensate. So because of that I started shifting to more um, normal primers, um, more luminous foundations or dewy foundations as you would, some people would like describe them. Um, and I've noticed that my skin doesn't really get as oily anymore. So that's just like a little bit about my skin. So anyway, understanding your skin type, that's going to help you determine everything else that you need to move forward with. So I have a very normal skin type. Sometimes around my nose, like right here, I get dry and I can tell because even if I wear like more luminous foundations and my normal like skincare, um, right here I'll get some cracking and it'll kind of like catch there, like my products will catch there. Um, the rest of my skin is very, very normal. With the hopes that like what I'm saying will help you guys, but also you'll be able to get like a visual idea of what I'm talking about throughout this video. I am going to do half of my face the right way or the way I would recommend. And then I'll do the other half of my face, for lack of a better term, the wrong way. Let's talk about primer. I prefer to go with more moisturizing or hydrating primers. So... With that being said, I really do, I don't have it anymore because I ran out, but I love the Morphe Revitalizer Primer. That one's very, very nice and it's not too expensive. I also really like the Milk Hydro Grip Primer, but I think out of the two, I love this primer a little bit more. Um, it just kind of grips onto my foundation a little bit better without making me feel dry or anything like that. So in terms of primer, my tips for application would be to know what style of primer you're using and then kind of like understand the your skin type and the parts of your face where you're going to be putting those primers like some people have a very oily t-zone and then like they're normal around the rest of their face or they have like dry patches on their skin but the rest of their skin is normal so um, knowing what type of primers you're putting on those areas will be the best in terms of getting your foundation to look good on those spots so, with that being said, I use this primer not all over my face. 
Um, the more we get towards the center of my face, the is where I get more kind of like dry. So I take a small amount of this primer and I just focus it right here around my nose and the center of my face, kind of in my under eye area, and I just spread it out from there. So those are all the tips I have for you guys in terms of primer. Just make sure that you know your skin time and what types of primers you are combining with that. And then also make sure you know and pay attention to what areas of the primer, what areas of your face you are putting those primers on. Um, so now we'll go ahead and get on to foundation because that's the next step that I would do in my makeup. So this is like one of the hardest, I think, parts about kind of figuring out what works best for you because there are so many factors there are undertones just shade in general there are factors that affect like the finish of a foundation versus your skin type so this is kind of like one of those try them all and find what you love sort of things um, which is why I rarely ever wear different foundations in my pictures or videos just because I have one that I, I have one that I really really like honestly but I always go back to my NARS Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation because the shade matches, the undertone matches, the finish is beautiful. It doesn't leave me oily at the end of the day. I don't feel dry. It's not heavy. It's just like the perfect, perfect foundation for me. I was talking and I didn't even know when the camera cut out. But anyway, I'm a huge proponent of getting um, sample shades from the store just because you never know how a shade's going to match you after the fact, like after you've, everything has kind of um, set and it's mixed with your other products, your other concealers, your powders, your primers, all of that kind of stuff can affect the way a shade finishes on your skin. And so that's why I really recommend using those samples and taking advantage of that opportunity for yourself just to save money and also kind of like figure out if it's a product you really really need. There are so many different ways you can apply your foundation. It all depends on the foundation itself that you're using, like how thick it is. I use just a lot of liquid foundations, but you could also be using um, stick foundations and all of that kind of stuff or really really liquidy foundations, so it just kind of depends on the product you're using. But people often gravitate toward these kinds of more dense brushes or sponges. I like brushes. This is the Anastasia A30 brush and I also like sponges. So I'll go between the two. Um, just depending on the finish I like. I find that brushes are a little bit faster for me and they take up less of my product. So I'm going to show you guys on the left side of my face which is the right for you. This is going to be not wrong but the less good way to apply foundation to your skin. And on this side, I'm going to show you my preferences, my recommendations, and how I like to apply it. So let's get into it. So I'm taking my NARS foundation right here. Um, some people pump foundation onto the back of their hand or onto a palette or onto just like anything on their desk. I like to pump the foundation right onto my skin just because I can get a better feel for how much I am using. So I like to start on the side of my face right here and I do two kind of thin lines. I do one towards my chin and then I do a little one on my forehead. And none of these pumps are more than like half a pump because I don't really like a lot of thick foundation. We're going to take the brush and we're going to start, I like to first kind of spread the product around. I like to distribute it a little more across my face and then from there I like to buff it in to get a nice finish. And then I don't like to take foundation up too high under my eye because I know I'll be putting concealer there and I just find that like the less product you build up in areas the better or more natural your makeup's gonna look especially if you're just getting into makeup so I will take it not all the way up and I try to avoid a lot around my nose because like I was saying before this area will tend to crease and crack on me so I don't take a lot of foundation in there this is like a mix between stippling motions, which would just be like patting in. It's a mix between stippling motions and swiping, just because I like the finish that that gives. And then in terms of my nose, I will take the foundation a little bit 
whatever's like left on the brush after blending out the rest of my face and I will take that up my, the side of my nose. After I've kind of like stippled everything in, I'll just take the brush and do little circular motions just to blend it in even more to my skin. Yeah. So this is like the way I would properly um, blend out my foundation. I will show you up close the finish of it. You can see how it's not a super thick finish or thick layer just because everything in here, like my freckles right here, you can still see them, which is what I prefer. On the other side, I'm going to show you common mistakes or things that I did wrong when I started out. So, um, I still applied the foundation the same way before, but I would like put way too much. So we're going to go ahead and try on like two full pumps. So what you don't want to do is over apply product. That's the first tip because that's not going to look good once you start adding everything else on top. Um, and you can always like build coverage in areas that you needed more instead of all over your face. This is just going to give um, more of your skin time to breathe. So um, I pumped on like almost two full foundations for half of my face which I do not recommend especially if you're getting into makeup because it's going to be harder to make that look more natural or like less cakey and have a nice finish. So my skin looks very like smooth. This is obviously like more of a natural finish. This looks very smooth and even, but it feels so heavy. And if you look up close, you can see the little streaks from the brush. And that's what you want to avoid, which is why I recommend blending out your foundation the way I showed you on the other side. And also you can see already around this area by my nose that the foundation is caking up. And that's just gonna get worse. Like, I'll blend it out now, but later it'll still look just as bad. And what I'm also gonna do is take this foundation all the way up under my eye. And that's not gonna be good later on when we try to put concealer under there, just because there's already like a bunch of product there that the concealer is going to have to layer on top of and it's not really going to get the chance to stick to the primer that we put down earlier. For concealer, I prefer to use a lighter coverage foundation and then under my eyes I like to use a little bit of a heavier coverage concealer. So this is the Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer from Too Faced and I use the shade Warm Beige. Um, I'm not much of a kind of like bright under eye highlight type of girl. I like a shade that's a little bit lighter than my foundation but not like too much like maybe maximum three or four shades um three or four maybe maximum like three shades above my foundation shade but on this side right here i'm going to show you guys like the way i prefer to apply concealer so i apply foundation with a brush just because i like the way it finishes better um, and you could always go over it with a sponge at the end if you want to but in terms of concealer i recommend applying it with a sponge just because we'll get a better finish under there i like to do three swipes under my eye and if I want to apply more later I can always go back and do that. I like to do my forehead like this obviously on both sides but this time I'm just going to do it like on one side. Um, I like to go a stripe down my nose and my chin. So this is like what, how I would lay out my concealer and then blend it out that way. Um, I have a pretty narrow face and a small forehead, so I like to kind of focus highlight on the center of my forehead, and I'll talk a little bit more in one of my future videos when I talk about bronzing and contour about why I don't like contour the top of my forehead, but basically I just want to make it look a little bit wider to balance out my face since it is so small. For blending out concealer, I like to use a sponge. This is the Morphe. I think it's like the bullet blending sponge or something like that. I just like the shape of this one. So I'm going to take the end with a little bit of a point and I'm going to, I don't know how to describe this motion. I'm just going to bounce it on top of the concealer very, very lightly. And I like to focus bringing my concealer out this way and not bringing it down so much because like I was saying before, my nose will um, crease if I like build up too much product there. 
So I try not to take it down there. I try not to take concealer that far down. So I will generally start with my chin, just bouncing that in, focusing it towards the center. I will do my nose. I start from the bottom and then I go up the center of my face and then my forehead. I'm bouncing the product out and I'm not taking it too far from where I placed it. So I don't want to start blending concealer all the way out towards the edges. I just want to focus it and then I'll use a cleaner side of the sponge to blend between the concealer and the foundation. So that's how I will focus on the center of my face and do the center of my face first just because whenever I blend out my concealer, if I start with my under eyes, the concealer on one side of my face will get absorbed more into my sponge and then I'll end up with like uneven coverage under my eyes. So I always start with the center of my face and then I'll do my under eyes. And I'm going to start with my under eyes from the bottom first, blending out between the end of the concealer and the foundation. I take this up onto, not down here to the curve of my nose, but right here to the bridge of my nose. And then when I get out to the end of my face, I try to stop the concealer pretty much right here where my brow ends because I usually bronze there. And once I feel really confident with how that looks, I will then take my sponge and blend my concealer up closer to my under eye. So this is like my finished, this is just foundation, this is foundation with concealer. Like the way it brings a little bit of dimension back to my face. Um, so I'll show you guys on the other side here what I do not recommend for concealer. Some artists take concealer and they'll go all the way, swipe under their eye like this. Um, and then they'll bring the concealer down and up. And overall, the reason, again, that I don't recommend this is just because it's too much product. Um, the coverage under the eye is honestly, like, very pretty, but it's too much for, like, my skin. And I know this because, like I was saying before, my under eyes are very, very like creasy. And so when I put too much concealer under there, this is the area of my face where that would show the most. So that's all I have for concealer, really. Concealer is one of those things where you can like balance everything else out. So if you, as long as you find a shade that doesn't look crazy with your foundation. Shaping is totally up to you. Blending is super, super important just because you don't want to look like you have just bright spots under your eyes or unblended like blobs of concealer on your face um, but with that being said I'm going to move on to powder like I was describing to you guys earlier about my skin type I do have very normal skin with like more dry under eyes so because of that I don't like to set my whole face I'll just lightly set my under eyes with powder and then um, I don't bake or anything um, I just like the way it looks if I do like softly set my concealer with a little bit of powder using a wet sponge so that's what I'm gonna do today I'm taking a different sponge I don't want to use the same sponge for my concealer and my powder and on the right side of my face right here I am going to take a little bit of this powder on this wet sponge and I'm going to press it into the concealer under my eyes and use the sponge to blend it in. I'm also going to use it to set the concealer on my lid, the concealer on my chin very softly, and the concealer on my forehead. So mainly I like to focus powders just in the areas of my face where I did put concealer, but something I do that is a little bit um, outside of that is that I like to set my whole nose with powder. So on the other side, what I'm going to do is bake. So what I'm going to do is take a different sponge, wet sponge, dip that into my powder, kind of pick up a lot, and I'm going to pack it on under my eye. I 
I hate this so much. Okay, while this is kind of like setting into my skin, I guess, I'll talk about why I don't really like baking. So my under eyes, let me tell y'all, it feels so dry already. I don't understand how people can leave this on for like 20 minutes or whatever. It's just not for me. Um, but that's totally up to you if um, you find out that you like this technique. We'll kind of see the finish at the end. But looking at the like side that I would recommend, my skin under my eyes looks very smooth and soft without kind of looking like dry. It looks set, it looks soft without being um, too dry. And the rest of my skin still has like a nice natural finish because I didn't put powder all over it. So now we're gonna wipe away the bake. Swipe away the bake, dust away the bake. However you like to say it. So I'm taking this brush, this big fluffy brush. It doesn't look that bad from far away. This is the bake like dusted away, but my skin feels incredibly like dry. And your skin should still feel like skin when you're done. Like this side, I don't feel the makeup. Like I just don't really feel it there at all. This side, my eyes. Like, I just want to know if they're okay. All right, all right, all right. Okay, okay, okay. So, that is all I have for you guys for today's video. Um, I know that these two sides of my makeup don't look the most drastically different in the world. But that's just because with the base makeup, it's kind of, like, once you find shades that work well for you and all of that kind of stuff, it's a little bit easier to hide the mistakes or um, kind of like make them less prominent and that's okay if, and even even with that being said like this side right here it doesn't feel comfortable it feels better now that I've applied setting spray and everything but um, it's less about the look and more about the feel and what you want for your makeup is for it to be comfortable for you to wear and um, <laughs> Especially with your base makeup, it's the foundation for everything else that you're going to put on your face. So you want to like the way it looks, you want to like the way you applied it and how it feels because that's going to set you up well for everything else that you do. Or how you feel about the finished product of your makeup. So, I hope those tips were helpful for you guys. Um, if you have any questions, definitely leave them in the comments because I'd love to like respond and answer. I know I couldn't hit everything today and I'm sure there, I'm going to be editing this and see things that I wanted to say. But hopefully, all in all, it was a little bit helpful for you. I'll be showing you guys other parts of my makeup or other tips that I have for different parts of your makeup later on this month. So make sure you stay tuned for this series. Um, those will be a lot more noticeable in terms of like the good versus the bad or the recommended versus the not so recommended. So keep an eye out for that. Um, other than that, if you like this video, if you like me, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Keanu Mitchell underscore. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!